oiling your machine, you open up the holder to the bobbin or the cover to the bobbin case and you're going to take the bobbin out of your machine. And the first thing that we're going to oil is called the race of the rotary hook. Inside at the bottom of your machine, there's going to be a little circle with a, with a cotton wad in there. And that gets oiled, one drop of oil in there, every four hours that your machine has been sewing. A good thing to get yourself is, a, is a, uh, an oiling pen. These are refillable and they let out a drop at a time and they've got a really nice way of getting into areas that are hard to reach. So you may want to consider getting yourself an oiling pen. Underneath the needle plate, you're going to see your rotary hook, and that's the piece that the bobbin sits in. And also there's two knives. There's a moving mez, which is this piece right here, and there's also a fixed mez. When the machine does a trim, the, fi the moving mez comes out, grabs the thread, and pushes it into this knife, the fixed mez, and that creates the thread cut. When you're oiling in here with the mezes, basically you're going to oil both places where it pivots from. And you can see that this will pivot over this way. So where you're going to oil it is here and then again over here. And that will take care of that. The next place you're going to oil is your reservoir and that's located directly behind the head of your machine. Your owner's manual recommends you oil this once a day. And that basically equates to six to ten drops of oil for every million stitches that you sew. On your control panel, remember before we showed you how you can see the cumulative stitch count, so you can use that for oiling purposes as well. The next place that we're going to oil is the bed or the arm of the machine, and it's a good idea if you move the frame all the way up or all the way back. You'll notice that there are three locations on here. There's a little red spot here. There's one right here. And there's also one that's not marked right here. Now, each one of these is going to get three to six drops of oil in it. Your owner's manual will say every three days. That will basically equate, again, to a million stitches. The next place that you're going to oil is called the needle bar spring. And as I'm moving it, you can see the needle bar move up and down. The spring is on the outside of it. Your owner's manual recommends that you oil that every three months. We recommend one drop every four million stitches. And you're just going to oil the very top of the, the spring, not the needle bar itself. Gravity will take its toll and it will go all the way down. The arrow is pointing to the location that you use to oil your bridge machine. There is a cover that you do need to pull out and you're going to place the oil in here. You'll be oiling about six to ten drops every million stitches. When you're finished with your oiling, replace the cap and your machine is good to go. The next place that we're going to clean out is underneath the needle plate. And to do that again, while the needle plate, where you take your screws out and you lift off the needle plate, inside you're going to have different uh, pieces of thread that's going to pile up, um, and that's what you're going to be cleaning out. It's a good idea to use electronic compressed air, which means it has no moisture in it. And basically you can see the kind of debris that would collect in here. So you're just going to take the compressed air and you're going to spray it inside of there to get all of the, the lint and all of the pieces of thread out of there. If you don't get them out, what can happen eventually is your moving mez and your moving mez can get bound up with it and it can actually cause bird's nests underneath your fabric as well as seizing up the, the knives so that they don't work anymore. The next thing that you're going to do is your bobbin. You open up your bobbin case, you take your bobbin out and actually take the bobbin and remove it from the bobbin case. To do that, you just turn the bobbin case upside down, remove the bobbin, pull it right out, and we're going down to our tension spring. We're going to loosen the tension spring so that we can see light. We're going to loosen it up as much as you can, and we want to have this as loose as possible. Once you've got this loosened up, 
and you want to make sure that you can actually see some sort of light underneath there. You're then going to take a business card and just put it underneath the corner and wipe it through. That'll get rid of any kinds of dust or anything else that may accumulate in this particular area. Once you've done that, you're going to retension your bobbin. The next thing we're going to do is change out a needle. Now, what you'll need is a pair of tweezers, a screwdriver, a pair of nips, and needles. To start off with, just take the thread out of the needle if the needle is not broken. If the needle's broken, you won't have to do that, obviously. Take the thread and put it out of the way. At the top of the needle, there's a screw. Now that screw holds the needle into the needle bar, and it also holds the presser foot assembly, which is everything from this black washer down. It also holds that onto the machine. Please be very careful when working with this screw not to loosen it up too much, otherwise it, you'll take the screw right out and the needle, the presser foot assembly will fall off. Those screws are very, very short. Put your screwdriver into that screw, hold the needle with your other hand, turn it slightly to the left to loosen it, pull down on the needle. Turn it slightly, pull down. When the needle is free of the needle, the presser foot assembly, stop unscrewing it. This is your actual needle right here. This is my demonstration needle. So you can see there's an obvious difference in them. To start with, the part that you want to face the front of the machine is the needle that's got the side that's got the big long groove in it. Now the back of the needle has got an indentation in it. This is called the scarf or the scarf. That needs to face the back of the machine. So to start with, when you put your needle in, you're going to hold it with the dent facing the back of the machine, and you're going to slide it back in. So let's go back to our real needle for a moment, and we're going to look for that dent, put it to the back of the machine, push it up through the bottom of the presser foot first, grab it with your other hand, and then just kind of feed it in. It's important that you don't push it with your finger because you could wind up actually puncturing your finger and it's not going to feel that good. Move this around or use your tweezers to hold it. Take a second needle and put the second needle into the eye of the needle. And what this will do is this will help you line it up so that it's straightforward. Now once you have that in there, you can let go of the needle. All you're going to do is tighten it down righty-tighty with that screw. Now once it's tightened down, you're going to re-thread your needle. And again, I'm going to put a 45 degree angle cut on here, and it should go right into the eye of the needle. And then use your tweezers to grab it on the other side. Push it down through the presser foot, and then up into the coil and trim it right above the coil. And that's how you change a needle. The next thing I'm going to go over is how to adjust the laser. Now the laser is located right here, and occasionally when your machine is shipped to you, the laser could be put off a little bit. What we're going to do is press on your control unit the All button, and that will turn your laser on so you can see where the laser is going to be on the needle plate. You have two screws. One is located on the side and one is located on the back. You will be using a three millimeter Allen wrench for this. And basically what you do is you loosen it up just slightly. And then this will control whether the laser goes forward or backward. And just kind of move it around until you get it over the center hole. Once you have it in place, just hold the laser and then tighten it down. Make sure that that's right over the, the hole in the needle plate and your laser is now lined up. 